we're going to jump into Patsy. Um, so I've given you a little bit of an introduction before, um, and we'll do a little bit of a recap as well. But again, this is an intermediate video. You know, I'm assuming that you have some knowledge of machine learning, uh, of data processing, of linear models, and of hypothesis testing. All of these are super intimate to how Patsy works. Um, but let's just get started. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do some basic imports right in the beginning. Um, and the first thing that we're going to explore is called demo data. Uh, we're not going to explore it too long. Uh, demo data is Patsy's way of providing you with some demo data to sort of play around with. Um, demo data gives you either categorical or numeric, depending on what letter they begin with. Um, so for example, uh, anything that comes before M or M is going to be categorical, and anything that comes after P is going to be numeric. So we've got M and P. Uh, any O is, is an error. It will throw an error. It's kind of funny. Um, notice as well that if you call this again and again, you're going to get the exact same values again and again. Uh, so it uses a random state. So notice I called this with a specific M and a specific P. And if I call it again with specific M and specific P, I'm going to get this negative uh, 0.977. I'm going to get this negative 0.977. Um, so this, this is true universally. Um, the numeric values are sampled from a normal distribution, uh, mean zero, standard deviation one. The second way Patsy can provide you with some data is called the balanced. Balanced is super useful for making balanced categorical data. So we'll give you uh, one of each categorical type that you'd like. So I've got A2 and B3. So what it's going to give me is the cross product of A's and B's. So A1, B1, A1, B2, A1, B3, A2, B1, a2, B2, A2, B3. Uh, so I get every single one. Uh, I can have multiple repeats of this pattern by increasing the repeat parameter right here. This is somewhat useful when playing around with stuff. It's mainly useful to demo Patsy functionality to you. Okay, so let's get actually started. Um, when you're going about doing Patsy, you're going to have some data. Uh, the data is going to be in some sort of form. Uh, perhaps you've got a column A, a column B, a column X1, a column X2, a column Y, and a column Z. Um, these could be anything. It could be male, uh, male, female column, uh, a, an age column, uh, an income column, uh, a political party column. Um, so you get some data, and you want to transform this data in order to do statistical learning on it. Uh, so this is how we go ahead and transform that data. So for example, I make some demo data. I transform this data into a matrix, which is super easy to feed into models directly uh, using this dematrices command. And I show you this how easy it is to feed into a model by just doing uh, a simple linear regression right here and printing out the parameters based on this linear regression. The parameters are right down here. So I go ahead and I try to predict y based on x1 and x2. And I get uh, x1 is 0 0.08 and x2 is minus 1 point something. Okay, so it's super simple. Um, D matrices takes the form of whatever's on the left hand side, this is going to be the outcome or the target, and whatever's on the right hand side is going to be the predictors or the factors. The tilde will separate out the factors and the predictors, uh, the factors and the outcome. Uh, okay, I don't use this super often. Uh, I generally prefer to work with a D matrix. Generally speaking, your outcome is pretty easy. Uh, generally speaking, it's going to be either true, false, uh, a specific category, or a number. You don't need to make lots of transformations to your outcome. Uh, so your outcome could be something like how much money did they make, or it could be their FICO score, if you're trying to predict something like that. Um, generally, what you need to do is you need to take the factors, you need to transform them, and do lots of stuff. Uh, so generally, I'll use D-matrix. So it takes a single thing, which is going to be composed of lots of factors, and it will spit something out. Um, so it will spit out a design matrix. Uh, if you don't like design matrices, which I don't particularly like, uh, you can go ahead and return type data frame. So check this out, return type data frame, and we'll spit back a data frame. And this is just the normal pandas data frame, which is sweet. You can feed this to models really easily. Um, so there's a couple of extra juicy parameters you can feed to dmatrix. Uh, the first one is the formula itself, uh, and I'll get to that in a little bit. The second one is the data. The third one is the eval environment. Um, what this means is that Patsy looks into the actual Python executable environment that is surrounding it and pulls in information from it. Um, so for example, 
in my data, I don't have an X3. I only have X1 and X2. So how did I get an X3 as this column here? Well, as long as I declare an X3 <coughs> as a variable in my enclosing scope, just, just right above it, I can go ahead and import that. So I say X3, it will refer right to this X3 here. If X3 were in my data, uh, it would go ahead and refer to the data instead of the scope itself. Okay. The in a action is also somewhat nice, though I don't use it too frequently. This says drop. So I included a numpy.nan in this X3, and it goes ahead and it drops it down here. You don't see it. Um, you can change the eval environment. So instead of looking at its current eval environment, you can look at the one prior to it. Um, if I look one prior, it, we're already in the most outer scope, so it, it gets confused. Uh, my advice is don't even set the eval environment. It's not super useful. Only unless you're a power user would I really use this stuff. The next thing that you can do is on an NA, you can raise. So let's say you're really keen about having all the data filled in. You can go ahead and say, if I see any uh, non-numbers, I'm going to raise an error. So this raised an error because there was not a number. Okay. Let's go ahead and explore one final part of design matrices. So we know we can get them as uh, data frames, and data frames are really nice in pandas. Um, but we can also get them as design matrices, and why do we want that? One, it's good, it can feed into models, and two, it has something called design info, which can give you lots of information. Uh, I go ahead and I extract the design info by taking d.designinfo, and I can extract lots of things from it, like column names, what are the names of all the columns, like column indices, where, where do the columns actually exist? I can also get term names and term slices. So if a single variable is encoded into five variables, so you've got like a category that's either uh, A, B, C, or D, or E, uh, or F, and, and you encode it into five different columns, it will go ahead and say, hey, this one term that you were looking before was transformed into five columns. And you'll often want to do this. These transformations you'll see a lot. If you were, I guess, curious about why would you take a single column in a data set and transform it into multiple columns, keep watching. Uh, I'm not going to be covering it in this video, but I'm going to be covering it in the other videos, like categorical encoding and splines. Um, okay, so this is a nice programmatic way in order to say, like, hey, this term, category X, you know, what's their FICO score range? Uh, what did it uh, actually transform into in our data frame? Um, you can also get terms and term slices. This is much more, I, I'm just showing you can get this information. We'll explore this a little bit more later on when we talk about formula and programmatically making these formula. Okay. We can also get factor info, uh, which is somewhat useful. So this will say, let's look at all of our factors and let's see the info from them. Um, numeric stuff, it's not super useful. Uh, it's just going to say numerical. Categorical stuff, if it's a category, it will show you what categories it inferred. Um, and maybe you have something that's like, what? I, I don't know. And, and so it can show you also whether it's categorical or, or numeric. So just in case you had something that is categorical and got transformed into something that's numeric, you can check it here. Term codings. This is a long form way of doing this. Um, the only thing else that this gives you is a contrast matrix. If you don't know what a contrast matrix is, I, again, you should definitely watch the next uh, couple of videos, and specifically the one on encoding, on categorical encoding. Um, okay. The final thing that we do here is use a describe. So what this does is say, hey, uh, we, we made this data, we have a formula that we, that we fed into our matrix, but what does the formula actually compile into? And this will show you what the formula compiles into. Uh, so it's sort of like a simplification. Um, there's also something called a linear constraint. Uh, we're not going to be going into this, uh, at least not until we get to the spline lecture. So just hold your horses. So a lot of stuff. So design matrices do a lot of stuff, but why do I want them? Why do I want a design matrix? Or why do I want to use Patsy to transform my data for stats? And the reason why is it's got a ton of really cool built-in features. So oftentimes in stats, you'll want to transform one of your uh, variables into log space. And so you can go ahead and you can pass np.log uh, into x1, you maybe want to center it or do something like that. And you can get one of your uh, factors into log space super easily. And we'll go ahead and we'll write that right here. This is, this is logged. What you can also do is you can also have center and standardize methods. So you're almost always going to be wanting to center, or, or not even center, but standardize, meaning uh, subtract off the mean, divide by the standard deviation of your data. Uh, this is so you can get good relative approximations of things. And so this will allow you to center slash standardize super easily. 
So I can just show you that. Super cool. Um, literally just one command. Um, you can write your own functions uh, like double. So I've written a double here so you can double anything that you want. Uh, so all these data transformations for you are super easy and available at the touch of a finger. Um, dealing with some things, it, it comes with some built-in fun. So if you've got a weird column name, so this one is has a space and an exclamation point, it will complain. The way you access weird column names is you use the queue functionality. So you just wrap that weird column name in the queue. And it, will, it will process the weird column name. And you can do anything you want with it. Um, so you can go ahead and you can... Um, you can feed it to another function, it just works the same. Let's say you don't want to add another factor, but you want to add two factors together. So previously when we've seen plus, we've said, hey, let's include weird column, and the plus sort of stands for an and x1. Or let's include x1 and x2. What if we want to include x1 plus x2? So in this case, we might want to include their salary from their first job and their second job. Uh, so to get their total salary, or if they're a, a, a waiter or a waitress, you could say, let's get their salary plus tips to get their total salary. We can use that. Uh, so in this case, it's super easy. You just use i. Uh, any of the built-in functions, so this is i of x1 plus x2. So any of the built-in functions like minus or divided by or stuff like that can be overridden with i. Um, if you're curious about the, what the cool built-in functions are, you should watch the formula video, which is a little bit after this too. So this is just like the really high level introduction. You can do tons of I stuff with it. The only thing that I would be careful with is be careful with the data types. So notice plus for uh, numpy arrays means element wise addition. Plus for Python arrays means concatenation. Uh, so in this case, we just element wide add. In this case, we concatenate. So we get six data points. So be very careful uh, with how you use this. The final couple of things I'm going to be showing you are dealing with intercepts and then sort of showing you some cool stuff. Um, so natively, uh, your data is, is going to come with an intercept term. So you've always seen this sort of 111, this native intercept term. You can take it out by just having 0, 0 plus. 0 will say like, hey, don't give me the intercept term. Um, your data is also really smart. Uh, so notice previously when we had no intercept term, A, this categorical variable, was translated into two columns. When we add an intercept term, it's translated into only one column. Um, this is super cool. Uh, Patsy does this automatically for you. Uh, the idea behind it is generally when you're making statistical models or, or working with hypothesis tests, you don't want to have two columns in your data that can predict each other exactly. So you don't want to have like um, an is male column uh, or I'm sorry, is above the age of 50 and is below the age of 50 column. You don't want to have both of those columns because if one is true, if I am above the age of 50, I'm definitionally not below the age of 50. So there's no extra information encoded there. You can get into a lot of problems, a lot of trouble if you try to do that. Um, and so this will automatically do this for you. You don't even need to worry about it. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can also do a ton of the native sort of like statistical operations. Uh, the colon sign is the interact sign. Um, I will talk about that a lot uh, in, in the formula video. Uh, so for those of you that don't know what interaction is, I'll include some links below. Um, you can go ahead and you can add in a plus b plus a uh, colon b. And so you can go ahead and add in these interactions. This is such a common um, uh, way of doing things because uh, generally speaking, if you are, so if you want to include the interaction, right, which, which is basically saying like, I think there's some sort of higher level, higher order uh, uh, relationship here. I think that you know uh, a student and uh, their salary uh, have some sort of high level, higher order interaction on their credit uh, worthiness. So just being a student might might you know decrease their credit worthiness, but if they're a student and have a salary, then that completely will negate the the, the student uh, um, uh, detriment in the first place. So I'll include that as sort of like a second higher order feature. So this is the idea of interactions. Generally speaking, if you include an interaction, you need to include the lower level features as well. Um, so you'll want to include the A plus the B plus the interact AB, unless they are nested. And we'll talk about this in formula stuff. Um, so uh, what we've got here is a handy shorthand in order to do this. So we go ahead and we say A star B, and this will include uh, exactly what I said right above. There's a ton of other things we can do. We can do polynomial encoding. Um, you don't need to worry about that. If you're interested in what that is, watch the encoding video. This is really cool. 
Now it, we get a linear part and a quadratic part. We can go ahead and interact categorical variables with numeric variables right here. That makes perfect sense. Uh, we can include other variables with that interaction. Uh, and we can go ahead and do super crazy stuff. We can have a polynomial encoding of A and interact it with the center of X, right? It's like, woo, that's, that's super cool. Um, so there's a ton of stuff that we can do. And all of it's basically through this one mode of using design matrices. Uh, design matrices will take your data, it will make statistical transformations to that data, like centering it, like taking uh, categorical data points, these qualitative data points, and making them into numeric ones. Um, like doing splines, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So we'll make statistical transformations to this data and give you a super useful form uh, to, to go ahead and feed into any of your models. So if you're doing hypothesis testing, uh, especially any sort of ANOVA analysis, if you're doing linear regression or linear models of any kind, and even if you're doing just normal machine learning, this stuff is incredibly useful. Um, so I hope this has been a decent introduction. Uh, you should definitely follow along for the rest of these videos because if you've not used Patsy and you have used any of these tools, Pandas, Numpy, Scikit-Learn, SciPy, anything like that, then you really should know about Patsy. Okay. Uh, okay, please tune in for the next one. Thanks, guys.